In this video, we are going to derive the relativistic motion in a constant uniform electric field of a particle. And typically, when you meet these kind of problems, when you encounter them at high school, for example, well, you already calculate the motion in a constant uniform electric field. And it's quite simple, actually. But it's not non-relativistic. So it's usual uh, mechanics, the classical mechanics that you encounter at high school. And now I'm thinking about Italy, for example, but never mind. In this case, we are going to do something more general and calculate the motion in uh, relativity. Also, we will take into account relativity. So the equation of motion in, a, in an electromagnetic field can be written as, and here we have the Lorentz force. So we have the derivative of the momentum with respect to time, and this is equal to the charge, E, of uh, the electron, for example, of, of the particle in general, times the electric field, plus, and here we can write also the magnetic part, so we have E times the velocity of the particle, cross product with uh, H over C, or Sometimes you might use a different notation where instead of H over C, you simply have B. But anyway, since we are considering only the electric field, this part here will be zero. So we only have P dot or uh, dP dt. So we can also write this as P dot is equal to E times uh, E. So lowercase E times uh, uppercase E. Electric charge and electric field. Now, we are going to consider, as I said, the motion of a charge in a uni uniform constant electric field. So E here will be uniform and constant. So it will be a constant vector at the end of the day. And the motion will occur on a plane. And we are going to take the xy plane as the plane of motion. This is just a choice. So it's easy to understand that the particle will move on a plane, and we are going to take the xy plane. The vector equation here will become simply p dot x equal to e times e. So this is the magnitude of the electric field. So for simplicity, we assume that we are going to consider the electric field to be directed along the x-axis. We choose the x-axis as the direction of the field. So this is an assumption and it can be done. And then we have py dot equal to zero. From here you get px equal to e times uh, uppercase e times the time plus a constant when you integrate this expression. But we are going to assume that uh, there is no integration constant. So the, the constant of integration here will be zero. So in general you have this expression plus a constant uh, that you get from the integration, but we will set this to zero for simplicity. And here you have py equal to a constant, and in this case we set the constant to be equal to p0 for the sake of simplicity as well. So we assume that at time t equal to zero, py is equal to p0 and px is equal to zero. So that's the assumption. And um, according to, to relativity, the... Um, Kinetic energy of the particle, namely the energy without taking into consideration the potential energy of the field, can be written like this. So I will write the kinetic energy, and this is equal to the square root of uh, m squared c to the fourth plus p squared c squared. And from above, you can also write this as m squared c to the fourth plus c squared p zero squared plus, and here you have C, E, electric field times time, squared, like this. And now, for simplicity, we are going to label this as epsilon zero squared. So this is simply the kinetic energy at time t equal to zero. So epsilon zero is the kinetic energy at time t equal to zero. So epsilon calculated at time t equal to zero is simply equal to epsilon zero. So it's just a definition there. So 
the kinetic energy epsilon can be written as the square root of epsilon zero squared plus C E E T squared, like this. And now we know that we also know that from uh, relativity, the kinetic energy can be written as m c squared divided by the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. And we also know that um, the momentum p can be written as m v divided by the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. Now, if you put these two together, you can also write the velocity v as momentum divided by kinetic energy times c squared. And now from here, if you take the x coordinate of this, you have the derivative of x with respect to time. Well, this is equal to px times c squared over epsilon, and this is equal to c squared e, capital E, times t divided by the square root of epsilon zero squared plus c e capital E t squared. And now we can simply integrate both sides with respect to time. And here you get x. And if you do the integral, which is uh, quite easy to carry out, you get one over e capital E square root of epsilon zero squared plus c e capital E t squared plus a constant here as well. Now, for simplicity, let's set this constant here equal to zero if we choose a suitable reference frame. And then we also have to do something similar for um, the y coordinate of the equation that we derived a few moments ago. So in this case, we have dy dt, and this is equal to py c squared divided by epsilon. And this is equal to p0 c squared divided by the square root of epsilon 0 squared plus c. And then we have e capital E t squared. And similarly, we have to integrate this. So it can be integrated without much of an effort. So in this case, let me do some steps. So we have y and here we have p0 c squared divided by epsilon 0 and then we have an integral an integral and uh, we have uh, dt divided by the square root of 1 plus c e e t so here we divide by epsilon 0 and this is all squared and at this point you can make a substitution and uh, for example, you can set C E E T over epsilon zero. You can set it equal to U. And then you make another substitution where U is equal to sinh xi, where uh, this is the hyperbolic sign of uh, xi. Or if you want, you can just make one single substitution. And instead of making two substitutions, you make just one. So instead of using U, here, you just set this expression equal to the hyperbolic sign of uh, xi. And then when you do this kind of integration, which is uh, very easy to carry out, you get P0 C divided by E, capital E. And then you have the inverse hyperbolic sign of C E E T divided by epsilon zero. This is the expression that you get. You also get a constant that uh, for simplicity we will set equal to zero, the constant of integration. And in order to summarize, let me rewrite what we found here. So in particular, we found x equal to the square root of, and uh, we have um, epsilon zero squared plus C E capital E T squared. Everything is divided by E capital E, and then we can rewrite the expression that we found here in this fashion. So we have sinh of E capital E Y divided by P zero C equal to C E capital E T 
divided by epsilon zero. So I have simply rewritten this expression here by putting this factor to the left. So of course you have to take the inverse of that and you will have E capital E divided by P zero C. And then I'm also going to, to, to take the cinch of both sides. So when you take the cinch of the inverse of the hyperbolic uh, sign, you will of course get back this function here, this function here, the argument of the inverse hyperbolic sign, which is exactly this expression here. And now you can put these two together, actually. It's quite easy to put the two together. And you can check quite easily that you get uh, x equal to epsilon zero divided by lowercase e times uppercase e times the cosh. So the hyperbolic cosine of e capital EY divided by P zero times C. And I said that it's quite easy to do that because uh, you just have to remember that cosh squared of uh, an argument minus sinh squared of the same argument is equal to one. So you get that cosh squared is equal to one plus sinh squared. And uh, you can uh, see it from uh, this square root here. So if you take epsilon zero out of the square root, what you will get is epsilon zero times the square root of one plus E times C times capital E times T divided by epsilon zero, all of these squared. So this is just uh, the square root rewritten in a different form. And now from, from uh, this equation, so since this argument, since this expression is equal to the sinh of that, you have one plus sinh squared. So one plus sinh squared is equal to cosh squared. And then when you take the square root of cosh squared, you get just cosh. The hyperbolic cosine or simply cosh is a, a function which is always greater than or equal to zero. So the square root of that will give you just cosh and not the absolute value of that. So you can remove the absolute value because as I said, cosh is always greater than or equal to zero. Now, this is the expression for, um, I mean, it's an expression that holds also for a relativistic case. So when the speed of uh, the object is very large, let's say comparable with that of the speed of light. But what happens if we consider the non-relativistic limit? Well, we have to make sure that we get back the usual uh, non-relativistic uh, classical physics. So this is what we are going to do. And in particular, in, in this case, in the non-relativistic limit, you get that uh, P0 will be approximately equal to the mass of the object times V0, whereas epsilon zero, which uh, let me remind you, is equal to M squared C to the fourth plus C squared P0 squared. Well, in this case, of course, since uh, P0 is equal to MV0, you can also substitute it here, but you can easily check that since here we have the speed of light, well, this first term is much larger than the second term. So basically what I'm saying is that this is approximately equal to mc squared. And now from here, we can rewrite x like this. x will be approximately equal to, so I'm going to simplify I'm going to, let's say, rewrite this expression in the non-relativistic limit. At first, we can write mc squared divided by E, capital E, and then we have hyperbolic cosine of E, capital EY, divided by mv0 times c. And now we can write the hyperbolic uh, cosine as a, a sum of exponentials. So in, in particular, we have m c squared divided by e capital e and we are going to use the definition of the hyperbolic cosine so we have the exponential of the argument so we have now we have to be careful because uh, the charge is e so you do not have to get confused this is not 
the number E in mathematics, which is, which is about 2.7, but this is the charge. So maybe I should write it as the exponential of E, capital EY, divided by M, V0 times C. Here we have that this is divided by 2, and here we have a plus, the same exponential but with a minus sign. E, capital EY, over M, V0 times C, like this. And now, since uh, C is very large compared to the other quantities, we can expand the exponentials, this one and this one. So e to the x, in general, where e is the number e, in this case, or if you want to avoid any, if, if you want to, to avoid any, any confusion, the exponential of x, let, let me write it like this. This is uh, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus dot dot dot. So we are going to use this expansion here. And therefore, this will be approximately, let me go below. We have mc squared divided by 2 e capital E. And then here we have 1 plus e capital EY divided by m v 0 c plus 1 half. And then here we have e capital EY over m v 0 c squared. And then we have 1 minus e capital EY over m v 0 c plus one half and here we have e capital e y divided by m v zero c squared and then you have higher order terms that we are going to neglect so in this case we can simplify this with this and then here you simply get m c squared divided by e capital e plus and here you get uh, e capital e divided by 2mv0 squared times y squared. So this is just a constant. This term here is a constant. And uh, this means that the coordinate x is equal to a constant plus e capital E divided by 2mv0 squared times y squared. So this means that if I want to draw the trajectory of the particle, and let's assume that this is y, this is the coordinate x. Well, what is this? Well, this is exactly um, a parabola, and the parabola can be drawn like this. In general, if the um, particle moves uh, in the positive branch of the parabola, it will move along this, uh, this part of, uh, of the parabola, for example. So it starts at this point, when y is equal to 0 and x is equal to this constant, and then it will move here, where y is, equal, is greater than 0, for example. But it could also move in the negative branch. It's, uh, of course, true. And this is exactly what uh, classical physics uh, says about this kind of motion. This is exactly what we get in classical physics. But we also derived earlier the more general uh, case where you, you can see that we found uh, an hyperbolic function here, which can also be written in terms of exponentials. But this, this law here that we found is more uh, general than the one that we derived at the end of the lecture, because uh, in that case, in this case here, we are just considering the non-relativistic motion.